Hello my large worlds. Today's review is a classic review of, of Don't make me say it. It's so vile, so tasteless that it, my brain exploded with hatred after I saw it on my first viewing in July 2014. It is the cinematic disaster of 2014, winner of two Razzies. And it's known as Transformers Age of Extinction. <laughs> yes, you didn't quite ask for it, so screws loose. Back in 2007, when action films weren't really that memorable, to be very honest, came that one movie known as Transformers. It was a really decent flick, and some okay performances back there. And of course, on top of it all, it made a lot of money. To be exact, $700 million global box office. Then it, then the sequels were kind of hit or miss with the massive with the massive miss being the Revenge of Fallen, which pretty much uh, the whole Transformers community said, screw it, screw it, we're not watching it. Then Dark of the Moon, that somehow became a more of a brief recovery. Then, seven years too late, a reboot came. It was a sad day for Transformers, when Transformers had passed away. With Mark Wahlberg miscast as a very unlikable ga garage guy, doing a plotline that's so damn right idiotic that I want to explode my head. Time to review this pile of garbage. Back in Age of Extinction, expectations would fairly high with this new flick, with Mark Wahlberg replacing Shia LaBeouf since Shia LaBeouf was getting arrested and appearing in Nymphomaniac and Fury, it's up to Wahlberg to carry the franchise into his legs or it's going to, or it's going to go down in flames. Okay, the story is... Don't make me go for it. Do I have to? Do I have to? Yes. Oh. It's a story. Can I explain it in a tone of film? Yes. Okay. An evil government wants to take out all the Transformers, which he hasn't done for the past seven years, but... <laughs> but a Transformer is taking them down. Even though it doesn't quite make sense, hundred percent makes sense. Then a company in China wants to repopulate the trans, repopulate the world with Transformers and wipe them out. The Transformers, e they'll team up, even though the goals are completely incompatible. Though so, I can't even to make the most dumb, stupid movie out there. Oh, there's a guy named uh, Mark Wilberg. He just kind of to make bad father and son of law jokes. That's it. The film in the tone how it's presented. The massive corners, the plot lines beyond stupid. I don't know how I could describe it. It's pretty much Michael Bay pretty much left his brain behind at a science convention and say, you know what, fans don't care. They're gonna get the cash and whoopie to doo da they'll be furious. So, who cares? I'm feeling a bit sad back now, seeing how much hatred that film got. Says it is one of the most hated films of not just 2014, but possibly ever or so far in 2010s. Meet the 2014's uh, least favourite producer dash director, Michael Bay who is more known the even worse Turtle reboot that came out last year and a horror film that nobody cares about, Ouija. Yeah, the characters are... The, ca the characters in the film, Mark Wahlberg, who plays a really... who plays an unlikable garage person who uh, who is an inventor and does nothing but yell 
and make bad jokes and all, all uh, and, and that's what he does he's pretty much attempting to one up Charlotte Buff but he just screws it up like and there's Nicola Parza aka one the cast that screwed up last M Bender who's just there to make bad rape jokes and even worse jokes about her bottom <sighs> come on can Master Roshi could do better and there's Ben Reynolds who plays uh, her boyfriend Who's also there just just for really poor laughs, like poor rape jokes, and even worse, poor jokes. There's Kelsey Grammer, who's a government who doesn't really do anything, but I kid you not, just sit there. Stanley Tucci, who is uh, who is a who who I like, Stanley Tucci, I kid you not. Uh, did a, uh, play a portray of Venter before, which is in a far more better film. You may know now. As... Oh wait, I lent it over to my uncle Adrian, which is, I, which is the Wind Rises. In Wind Rises, when Stanley Tucci voices an inventor, he sounds like he's living it. He sounds like he wants to be there. In Age of Extinction, however. He just sounds like he's like, hey, I don't want to be in there. I felt like, why are you here? I felt like he's just there to make bad joke. And for the others, like uh, Gridlock, who is a robotic villain, he is the most dumb, stupid, useless villain I ever seen. Heck, even a baby could do better. All he does, he... I kid you not, he let go, he lets go of the Transformers numerous times, he only kills one Transformer and that's it. And he does nothing but destroy the entire city of Hong Kong, or Shanghai. This, the movie is just hard to follow. I don't know what's, what's a bit into Bay. I think something to be, to avoid being brutally honest against the movie, I'll say this, the effects are good. I wouldn't say they were, I don't know, just oh, like uh, beautiful and artsy. Uh, I would say they pretty much up to the ante. It's like, a, it's kind of like, age, uh, like Dark of the Moon when they pretty much had this worm type of machine that destroyed lot of the tower. I see what uh, B was trying to do. He's pretty much make Transformers like... <laughs> It kind of looks cool for once, then it kind of wears out at the end. A lot of you thought, what was I'm going to criticise it? It's length. Oh my word, length. It's like three hours long. And he's pre Michael Bay just whacked us over with action, action, and action. Look, let's be honest here. Sorry. Okay, with... With Christopher Nolan's uh, Interstellar, yes I know, the movie's three hours long, at least uh, Christopher Nolan knows he's making a movie. While for Age of Extinction, he just makes one boring action fest. Conclusion, an over-boring, over-dumb, over-stupid, over-hideous Transformers fest that's dunked the entire franchise to the new low. It's so awful, in fact, that I consider myself this. Had I need you, I need you, I need you guys to think. Think in your mind. Michael Bay is the only director that's making action films directly at twelve-year-olds. Don't you think? Look, films are released around the time, like The Hunger Games. And Mad Max for your road, and a Hobbit, Dexter did critical hits. Well, this, this, well, Age of Extinction, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Project Alamuk, Dexter did critical flops. Look at the world around you. We have evolved. This is not 1996. This is 2015. The world's different now. All Michael Bay is doing it. The reason why we love films like The Hobbit, Mad Max, and Hunger Games, they give us a story, they give us, they gives us realistic and engaging characters, they give us 
a meaning. They give us something that we need to think of over and over again. They give us something that we could watch over the same movie over and over again. Well, for Bay, he's just still whacking us with action scene, action scene, action scene, and that's not, and that's not the type of move that would make an audience member go back on the film. What makes an audience member go back and do is what about he tries to force an ending like we will find you when Optimus Prime goes to space. I guess many audience members like screw it, we're not watching this. With these movies like Hobbit, Mad Max, Hunger Games, these are more than movies. It pretty much shows us it's not it's not in the nineties anymore. The movies are never meant to be action. They're never meant to be money. They're never meant to be dumb humor. It's meant to be what. It... Okay, what I should say. I think Michael Bay is one of these people that's so disinterested of moving on, moving on. While action movie stuff, while action movie directors like Brian Singer, Christopher Nolan, and Katsuhiro Omoto, and who else will I? And Guillermo del Toro. They seem to move on from the 90s to the today. They seem to change up the formula a lot. Well, for Michael Bay, he seems disinterested, like, Hey, let's make the same formula and put it on more movies, more movies, more movies, the more the money flows. Look, look at the world around you. Are we still uh, supporting the dumb humour? Are we supporting the dumb action? Are we supporting the over-the-top action? Look at the world around you. Even though uh, films like Spectre uh, that's coming out this year, they are focusing more on backstory. Films like Spectre and Skyfall, they are focusing more on backstory rather than action. While for Mad Max Fury Road, they are focusing way more on... Although they kind of focus on action, it's really choreographed and it's pretty much giving us more of a style. While well, Michael Bay, he seems like to jump the bang wagon and say, Hello, let's explode it and like boom, 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 with product placements, bad jokes and all that. It's the end of dumb action movies. I'm Elijah Wells and...